Bhikkhus. Possessing seven qualities. A bhikkhu can before long. With the destruction of the taints, realize for himself with direct knowledge, in this very life, the taintless liberation of mind, liberation by punna, and having entered upon it, dwell in it. What seven? Here, a bhikkhu is endowed with faith, virtuous, learned, secluded, energetic, mindful, and wise. Possessing these seven qualities, a bhikkhu can before long, with the destruction of the taints, realize for himself with direct knowledge, in this very life, the taintless liberation of mind, liberation by punna, and having entered upon it, can dwell in it. Dozing. Thus have I heard. On one occasion the Lord was dwelling among the Bhagas at some Sumarajara, in the deer park at Bisakala Grove. Now on that occasion the Venerable Mahamajalana was sitting and dozing at Kalavalama Tagama among the maggot hands. With the Divine Eye, which is purified and surpasses the human, the Lord saw the Venerable Mahamajalana sitting and dozing. Then, just as a strong man might extend his drawn-in arm or draw in his extended arm, the Lord disappeared from the deer park at Bisakala Grove, and reappeared before the Venerable Mahamajalana. The Lord sat down on the seat that was prepared for him and said, Are you dozing, Magalana? Are you dozing, Magalana? Yes, Banti. Therefore, Magalana, you should not attend to or cultivate the object that you were attending to when you became drowsy. By such means, it is possible that your drowsiness will be abandoned. But if you cannot abandon your drowsiness in such a way, you should ponder, examine, and mentally inspect the Dhamma as you have heard it and learned it. By such means, it is possible that your drowsiness will be abandoned. But if you cannot abandon your drowsiness in such a way, you should recite in detail the Dhamma as you have heard it and learned it. By such means, it is possible that your drowsiness will be abandoned. But if you cannot abandon your drowsiness in such a way, you should pull both ears and rub your limbs with your hands. By such means, it is possible that your drowsiness will be abandoned. But if you cannot abandon your drowsiness in such a way, you should get up from your seat, rub your eyes with water, survey all the quarters, and look up at the constellations and stars. By such means, it is possible that your drowsiness will be abandoned. But if you cannot abandon your drowsiness in such a way, you should attend to the perception of light. You should undertake the perception of day thus. As by day, so at night. As at night, so by day. Thus, with a mind that is open and uncovered, you should develop a mind imbued with luminosity. By such means, it is possible that your drowsiness will be abandoned. But if you cannot abandon your drowsiness in such a way, you should undertake the exercise of walking back and forth, perceiving what is behind you and what is in front, with your sense faculties drawn in and your mind collected. By such means, it is possible that your drowsiness will be abandoned. But if you cannot abandon your drowsiness in such a way, you should lie down on the right side in the lion's posture, with one foot overlapping the other, mindful and completely comprehending, after noting in your mind the idea of rising. When you awaken, you should get up quickly, thinking. I will not be intent on the pleasure of rest, the pleasure of sloth, the pleasure of sleep. It is in this way, Magalana, that you should train yourself. Therefore, Magalana, you should train yourself thus. We will not approach families for alms with a head swollen with pride. It is in this way, Magalana, that you should train yourself. It may be, Magalana, that a bhikkhu approaches families with a head swollen with pride. Now there are chores to be done in the families, and for this reason, when a bhikkhu turns up, people may not pay attention to him. In such a case the bhikkhu might think, Who has turned this family against me? It seems these people have now become indifferent toward me. In this way, through lack of gain one feels humiliated. When sensation humiliated, one becomes restless. When one is restless, one loses one's restraint. The mind of one without restraint is far from samadhi. 
Therefore, Magalana, you should train yourself thus. We will not engage in contentious talk. It is in this way that you should train yourself. When there is contentious talk, an excess of words can be expected. When there is an excess of words, one becomes restless. When one is restless, one loses one's restraint. The mind of one without restraint is far from samadhi. Magalana, I do not praise bonding with everyone whatsoever, nor do I praise bonding with no one at all. I do not praise bonding with householders and monastics. But I do praise bonding with quiet and noiseless lodgings far from the flurry of people, remote from human habitation, and suitable for seclusion. When this was said, the Venerable Mahamajalana said to the Lord. Briefly, Banti, how is a bhikkhu liberated in the extinction of craving, best among devas and humans? One who has reached the ultimate conclusion, one ultimate security from bondage, lived the ultimate brahmacharya, and gained the ultimate goal? Here, Magalana, a bhikkhu has heard. Nothing is worth holding to. When a bhikkhu has heard. Nothing is worth holding to, he directly knows all things. Having directly known all things, he fully understands all things. Having fully understood all things, whatever sensation he feels, whether pleasant, painful, or neither painful nor pleasant, he dwells contemplating impermanence in those sensations, watching fading away in those sensations, watching cessation in those sensations, watching relinquishment in those sensations. As he dwells watching impermanence. Fading away. Cessation. Relinquishment in those sensations, he does not cling to anything in the world. Not clinging, he is not agitated. Being unagitated, he personally attains Nibbana. He understands. Destroyed is rebirth, the Brahmacharya has been lived, what had to be done has been done, there is no more coming back to any state of being. Briefly, Magalana, it is in this way that a bhikkhu is best among devas and humans. One who has reached the ultimate conclusion, one ultimate security from bondage, lived the ultimate brahmacharya, and gained the ultimate goal. Metta. Bhikkhus, do not be afraid of merit. This is a designation for happiness, that is, merit. I recall that for a long time I experienced the desirable, lovely, agreeable result of merit that had been made over a long time. For seven years I developed a mind of loving kindness. As a consequence, for seven eons of world dissolution and evolution I did not come back to this world. When the world was dissolving I fared on to the realm of streaming radiance. When the world was evolving, I was reborn in an empty mansion of Brahma. There I was Brahma, the great Brahma, the vanquisher, the unvanquished, the universal seer, the wielder of mastery. I was Sakha, ruler of the devas, thirty-six times. Many hundreds of times I was a wheel-turning monarch. A righteous king who ruled by the Dhamma, a conqueror whose rule extended to the four boundaries, one who had attained stability in his country, who possessed the seven gems. I had these seven gems, that is, the wheel gem, the elephant gem, the horse gem, the jewel gem, the woman gem, the treasurer gem, and the advisor gem as the seventh. I had over a thousand sons who were heroes, vigorous, able to crush the armies of their enemies. I reigned after conquering this earth as far as its ocean boundaries, not by force and weapons but by the Dhamma. If one seeks happiness, look to the result of merit the result of beneficial deeds. For seven years, I developed a compassionate mind. O Bhikkhus, and for seven eons. Of dissolution and evolution. I did not come back again to this world. When the world was dissolving. I fared on to the realm of streaming radiance. When the world was evolving. I fared on to an empty Brahma mansion. Seven times I was great Brahma the wielder of mastery. Thirty-six times I was ruler of the devas. Exercising rulership over the devas. I was a wheel-turning monarch. The lord of Jambudapa. A head-anointed Kadiya. The sovereign among human beings. 
without force, without weapons. I conquered this earth. I ruled it by righteousness. Without violence, by Dhamma. Exercising rulership by Dhamma. Over the sphere of the earth. I was born into a rich family. With abundant wealth and property. Endowed with all sense pleasures. And possessing the seven gems. This is well taught by the Buddhas. The benefactors of the world. This is the cause of greatness by which. One is called a lord of the earth. I was a king bright with splendor. One with abundant wealth and commodities. I was a lord of Jambudapa. Powerful and glorious. Who. Even though of a low birth. Would not place trust on hearing this. Therefore one desiring the good. Aspiring for greatness. Should deeply revere the good Dhamma. Recollecting the Buddha's teaching.